Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome to GMLP-TV Doug White, who's the Director of Media Arts Programs, KDHX Community Media, which is located in St. Louis, Missouri, and Portland, Oregon. So uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ron. Uh, I, I think our viewers would be interested um, in what it's like to have a job where you're located in St. Louis, Missouri, <laughs> and Portland, Oregon. How does that work, Doug? Well, uh, just like what we're doing right now, uh, a lot of my meetings happen through uh, video chats, and um, you know, it's basically telecommuting the wonders of uh, technology. And so, um, a lot of people don't even know I'm not in St. Louis because I'm still very, you know, I travel there a lot, and I also, you know, have a presence uh, through email and the internet. So. Um, it's just allowed us to expand a little bit more on the West Coast, uh, some of the programs that we're running. And one of those programs, um, I think, was the International <laughs> Documentary Challenge. Uh, is that right? That, and, and could you tell us about your involvement in that? <clears throat> sure. Um, I started that program uh, about three years ago. And uh, this basically it came out of the 48-hour film project, which is an event that uh, actually I'm producing this week. I'm flying into St. Louis on Thursday, and I'll be there for two weeks, uh, and that's an event where filmmakers have uh, 48 hours to make a short fiction film. So they write, produce, and edit um, their films within one weekend, and then we screen them at the Tivoli Theater. Um, out of that, uh, I have a background in documentary and an interest, more of an interest in documentary, so I sort of, uh, as a lark, just thought, why don't we try and do this with documentary, because they usually take years to produce, so it'd be interesting to try and make one and in five days and sort of see what the results are and uh, started it three years ago and we give filmmakers five days uh, to make a short documentary uh, they get assigned uh, a genre which can be like character study or social issue political um, music uh, they actually get a choice between two of those and then they also get a theme that gets assigned to them uh, and that theme is uh, change it was this last year so they go out and they have five days to make their film then they submit their films to us, uh, and we get them judged, uh, and then we premiere them at the Hot Docs uh, International Documentary Festival in Toronto. This um, uh, the challenge was held in March. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, it's every March. And mm -hmm. so over a period of several months, uh, they were submitted and judged, and then presented in Toronto. That that must have been pretty recently. Yeah, actually, it's it's a tight timeline for us, but I mean, actually, everybody's making their films at the exact same time. So on, I think it was like March sixth through the tenth this year. So on March sixth, we got you know everybody. It was uh, 122 filmmakers from 16 countries. Um, all went out to make their films, and then they all you know we get inundated. Uh, I, I come into St. Louis and we check in all the films and then get them uh, digitized and online for a judging um, uh, program that we have. And then we have uh, people from all over the world, uh, professionals, who help us judge the films. Uh, so they all come in at once. We judge them within a couple of weeks. Uh, and then within a, a week or two after that, we're pre presenting the, the uh, top films at Hot Docs. That sounds, uh, so it does sound like a tight timeline. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, but to be able to, to, to do it with Hot Docs, we, we didn't have them the first year. They're, they're the largest documentary festival in the world. And... Um, it, it was good timing. It was a little tight, but it, it works. You know, we can make it. So, a lot of late nights. <laughs> well, I think our uh, our audience would be very interested to um, have your thoughts and your perspective on the media literacy skills that are learned through producing documentaries, uh, just any kind of documentary, and then in particular, what does this compressed timeline? Uh, do for the participants that maybe uh, maybe a longer timeline wouldn't provide. Yeah, um, I guess first the whole the, the impact on the filmmakers has been uh, one of the reasons that that I've continued to do this and have sort of expanded what we're doing. Um, there's you get the first of all you get the whole range from people who've never made a movie before to seasoned professionals who you know, like to just set aside five days to, to make a short documentary with, you know, which is feasible to do as opposed to a lot of projects can take years. So the idea of blocking out that time for a professional, um, you know, is a feasible thing to do. But, um, you know, anytime, I mean, most of these filmmakers who are, who are making these films, um, a lot of them say it's the best filmmaking experience they've ever had. Um, and it's compressing the whole 
you know, the whole process within such a limited time frame that you get to in a short period of time experience, you know, the, the entire process of making a film. And you're also working straight from your gut as opposed to mulling things over and thinking about them and, you know, re-editing and re-editing. And so a lot of times, um, I've even seen filmmakers who've, who've spent six months on a film um, and, you know, I like their five-day film better. You know, and they say it's because they didn't overthink it, you know. Um, and when it comes to media literacy, I think just any time you're actually creating, you're learning so much about how things are created. And then also the decision-making power that goes into it, you know, deciding what shots to use, what interviews to cut, and how you can shape your message and really construct it. Um, and a lot of people, you know, really, really learn a lot about how, how messages are constructed um, while constructing their own, especially in that kind of time period. you get feedback from the producers and the participants in regards to the process and the difference? Or is this... Oh, yeah. Of- I mean, and, and so here's one interesting statistic to, about this. So it, this five-day thing and, and why I, I've stuck with it and I'm going to and why it's so successful is people actually get their, their, their projects done. Um, we have another program called Coming Up Shorts where we have... We help local filmmakers make three-minute short films. Um, and one reason we started that was I was seeing all these filmmakers out there who wanted to create films, and they were either maybe half-hour or feature-length, and they were just never getting them done. I was there, Everyone was talking, but nobody was actually completing projects. And I always thought, I'm a filmmaker myself, and the most important thing is to actually get something done and then screen it to an audience. You know, screening to the audience is the biggest part of it, you know, you, I mean... And so you actually have to get something done to do that. And I was noticing just a lot of filmmakers talking but never producing any work to to put out to the world and get feedback on. And so coming up shorts, we might have 50 filmmakers who participate. Um, and we give them about four months to make this three-minute short. And, you know, we'll actually give them equipment and uh, give them classes and stuff. But at the end, we maybe get like 13 or 15 films turned in. And this is for over four months, you know, they have to produce a three-minute film. Well, we give these other filmmakers in the Documentary Challenge five days. Um, and we had 122 filmmakers. We got 101 films submitted, finished films. Wow. Um, wow. So there's something about giving somebody, you know, this sort of deadline in a, in a specific period of time to do it where they'll actually get it done, you know, um, and complete it. And I think that is, you know, and I, and I do think creating is, is a great way to learn media literacy. I mean, you, uh, you know, I don't think people really understand what goes into making uh, media until you make it yourself. And then you truly understand, first of all, how much work it is. And secondly, how much power you have over, you know, um, your message and how you're constructing it. Um, and, and how, you know, the tricks, too, of, of the, that people use and, and advertisers or whoever to get their message across, uh, you'll suddenly realize those as you're creating your own, your own piece. Well, this uh, other than this particular, you know, the challenge um, program, are there other ways that people in the Portland area and the St. Louis area can get involved in the creation of media through KDHX? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, KDHX has a lot of programs, and we've got um, uh, some some educational programs now where we've gone to a type of um, uh, a program where our classes are no longer just you before we had you'd come in and you just take a class on how to work a video camera and then you were sort of off to maybe make your own project well we realized is we were losing a lot of people um, and so now actually the classes are you create a, a video in your class um, and so when you come into the class it's you know instead of just it being a two-day class it's now over several weeks and you work through the whole process um, and we think that's the best way to get people to actually learn how to do it is to help them create it. And how would people find out more about um, those programs you just described and also about the challenge? Um, you can go to our website, kdhx.org. Um, and uh, at the top menu bar, there's education. And you can just click on that. And there's a, a whole thing on all of our education programs there. And the challenge? Uh, the challenge has, uh, you can get to it through the KDHX website uh, at our media arts section. Um, if you go to the TV and film uh, part of our website, and then there's a, a section called media arts under that menu. Um, you can also, it has its own, the documentary challenge has its own website, uh, standalone, which is uh, www.docchallenge.org. Well, that's great. We'll, we'll include those um, on the 
podcast. Um, okay, that, great. That we have of this interview. And so people will be able to just click on that link. Um, by the time we get it posted, that's the way it will appear to the user. Uh, well, okay. I really appreciate you taking the time with us today, Doug. And uh, sounds like a real exciting uh, uh, number of activities that you're involved in. And uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, I wonder if uh, if people are interested in, in a follow up, can they reach you or your or KDA checks uh, for, for further information uh, oh, like through the website? Um yeah, or my web, I can put out my email address is fine. I get a lot of emails and don't mind responding to, to interested uh, folks. So my email is doug at kdhx.org. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Thank you very much. We'll appreciate sure. it. And um, if you need help answering all those emails, just let me know. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Doug. All right. Thanks, Ron.